All right, so just about to install these pretty nice looking aftermarket rear axle hubs. Uh, these are from Lone Star, which uh, it makes pretty good products, and, and this is a nice looking piece of equipment. Uh, in addition, in contrast to the original equipment, it is lighter. It is made of billet aluminum versus the steel of the original equipment. The original equipment weighs about 1.8 pounds, and this one's just about 1.2 pounds, so uh, you're saving just over just over a half a pound. So pretty decent when you're considering that that is rotating mass. All right, one of the most critical pieces of installation of these rear axle hubs is you need to make sure that the spacers are oriented correctly, okay? So there's a conical spacer like this that fits into here. So that allows that mating surface to have in, as much surface area in contact as possible. For you know, if you were able, to, if you were actually just putting this one in there, you can see how the surface area that is in contact with that is much less because it is not a conical mating surface that it is designed to receive like that. In addition, on the inner end of that. You need this one here, which on the inner surface, so not like this one, which on the outer surface is conical. On the inner surface, this one it is conical, which you can see mates up with that conical surface of the axle there real well. Okay, so that's important. And then these make up the width difference depending upon whether you're running it as wide as possible, which I am, or whether you're running a little bit more narrow. Um, when you're going to install that, I'd recommend just a little grease or anti-seize on this mating surface, especially since that's dissimilar metals, meaning this is a steel axle and this is aluminum, um, and then thread sealer on those threads there. And do not forget either your cotter pin or um, uh, other clip here to uh, keep that from uh, coming loose. All right, so when it comes to tightening these. These are going to go to 145 foot-pounds and to help keep that rear axle from rotating you can place a pin in there and that'll help to hold that in place like that. And there are other ways to do that. You can put the tires on, put the brake on, etc. But this is the easiest way for me to do that right now and that holds it in place really pretty well. All right, so here's what those spacers look like when they're all installed. You have this one that's all the way to the inside with the inner conical um, depression there, and then the three regular spacers because this is full width, and then the one that's conical on the outside of the spacer or washer that fits into the conical depression in the hub. Then on the outside, you need a washer, so if you're running a more narrow setup where some of those regular spacers, one of these three or more, would be on the outside here, so there's one less, one or two less or three less here, meaning you're running a more narrow setup, then use these washers with a bigger inner diameter. Otherwise, for my setup with full width, you do the smaller inner diameter. And when it's all installed, it's going to look like that. And this kit comes with this fairly robust clip here. You can use a cotter pin as well though, but pretty nice looking setup, huh?